Welcome, friends. I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. We are beginning in Genesis chapter 4. Of course, in Genesis chapter 4, we are introduced to Cain and Abel, the first two children of Adam and Eve, who they bore in their own image in the sin nature. And uh, we're going to see the effects of that. So there's really two things that we're going to touch on today. One, we're going to see the birth of two sons. And then we'll see the bringing of two sacrifices in these verses as well. So in Genesis chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 1, it says, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she bare again his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. In the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, and of the fact thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if not, if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So as we come into these verses, we see first of all in verses 1 and 2, we see the birth of two sons. And Cain is the firstborn, and we see him mentioned in verse 1. The name, the name Cain means acquisition or acquired. And uh, many have looked at that as being prophetic of uh, the emphasis that Cain had on material fleshly things. Uh, it seems really that Cain did not have a lot of interest in the things of God. He didn't seem to have a lot of interest in what God had said. But really what kind of captured him is the physical things, material things, fleshly things. And uh, to a certain degree, that seems to be what Cain lived his life for. And the exact same thing is true of many people today. Uh, even Christians, sadly, they do not seek to live after the Spirit, but they pursue the things of the flesh. They pursue what this world has to offer. And he, so then Cain is a type of the flesh. Uh, he's a type of the earthy. And... Um, He's a type of the nature that every single one of us are born with uh, as human beings, that old nature and what the old nature craves. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 46 through 49, it says, Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth earthy, the second man is the Lord from heaven. So we see here the picture of the old nature versus the old, new nature. The old nature in us is earthy. It desires the things of this earth. It desires the flesh. And uh, the new nature desires the things of God, desires the things of heaven. Then it says in verse 44 of 1 Corinthians 15, It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. That verse is simply reminding us of what comes naturally to us. That which we are born uh, inclining towards is the earthly, it's the physical, it's the fleshly stuff. And it's only as we are born again by the Holy Spirit of God and led in a life that honors and glorifies Christ that we go from desiring and seeking that which is physical to desiring that which is spiritual in nature. At the moment of salvation, when we place our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, the Bible makes it very clear that our desires are changed and if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So we see here how Cain is a type of the flesh and seeks that which is of the earth. Then there is Abel, the second born. And Abel's name means exhal exhalation or vapor. And it could very well speak of the brevity of the life of Abel and the reason why his life was very brief was because of the fact that Cain, his brother, slew him, as we're going to see in the days to come. 
In James chapter 4 and verse 14, it says, What is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanishes away. You know, I get thinking about that. If somebody lives to be 100 now, that's pretty old. But the truth of the matter is, in light of eternity and how long eternity is, a hundred years is only a vapor. It's just a little time that we appear for and then we vanish away. And uh, Abel's life reminds us of that brevity of life that each and every one of us have. It reminds us of the simple fact that we need to be ready, that we need to be prepared for eternity. And we need to give serious thought to the question of where will we spend eternity because the truth of the matter is life is but a brief vapor, but eternity lasts forever. Um, Abel was a type of the spiritual man. He's a type of the spiritual second born man who seeks and desires to do things God's way. We're going to see in just a few moments that um, Cain brought the fruit of the ground and we'll see what that signifies. Abel brought a firstling of the flock. Abel was a keeper of the sheep, much like in a picture for us of the second Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is also a keeper of the sheep. He is described for us as the good shepherd. He is described as the great shepherd and the chief shepherd. As a good shepherd, he gave his life for the sheep. As a great shepherd, he cares for his sheep. And as a chief shepherd, he is coming again for his sheep. In John chapter 10, and in verse 14, Jesus himself said, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and, and am known of mine. So notice today, uh, very briefly, let's compare Cain with Abel. Both of them were born by natural generation. Both of them were born after the flesh. They were born to Adam and Eve after Adam and Eve had fallen into sin. They were both born with a sinful nature. One of them desired the things of this world. The other one, it seems, um, desired the things of God. Uh, even though he was born with a spiritual nature, he desired the things of God. Uh, it's, a, it's a prime example of two boys that were brought up in the exact same home, talk the exact same things about the fall of man into sin, talk about God's judgment upon sin, talk about the remedy for sin, and even though they were taught the exact same things and brought up the same way, they led two very different lives. One of them chose to do things his own way, and the other one chose to do things in a way that was honoring and pleasing to God. Both of them had different occupations. The Bible tells us in verse 2 that Abel was a keeper of the sheep and Cain was a tiller of the ground. We will see the significance of that tomorrow as we look into the offerings that they both bring. But let's just say today, friends, that, that these two men picture for us in Cain, a man who lives after the flesh, and in Abel, a man who lives after the spirit. And let me ask you today, as we bring our study to a close, and we'll look at the offerings and the sacrifices that they bring tomorrow, but as we bring our study to a close, is your life characterized by how Cain lived his life, or is your life characterized by how Abel lived his life? Are you living a life that is directed and driven by the flesh and the things of this world and what this world has to offer? Or is your life dominated by the Holy Spirit of God? Is your all surrendered to Him? And are you at the place in your life that by His power and by His grace you are enabling to live a life that honors and pleases Him? We're going to see tomorrow that God was not pleased with Cain, that God was not pleased with the work of Cain's hands, and that God was pleased with Abel. Friends, I hope that your desire, that your desire is that you would live a life that God is pleased with how you live your life, that God is pleased with what you do. I know, friends, may it be our desire to live and so that our life is is patterned after the life of Cain, of Abel, doing those things that are honoring and pleasing to the Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you to come back tomorrow as we continue to look into Genesis chapter 4. And as we look at the two sacrifices that Cain brought and Abel brought, one accepted, one not accepted. And we'll look at why that is the case as we gather together tomorrow to study once again in the book of Genesis. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us.